Hello, hello guys. Testing, testing. I can hear myself, so that means it's working. Testing a little bit more, okay. Can you guys hear me? Hi Jimmy, how are you? Welcome, welcome to the stream. I'm so excited to be here today. This is my first ever Pixelogic stream from my new house in Florida. I used to live in Texas, context. Hey David. Hey Jamer. Jamer for me. I'm glad you guys can hear. I was having technical difficulties. Um, ever since I moved, I think I banged up my microphone just a little bit too much and every once in a while I just doesn't want to start up at all. So, um, my name is Ana Carolina Pereira, Anna, uh, and I'm really happy to be here. Today we're doing a stream in English. If you guys know me and my streams, you know that I alternate between English and Portuguese here on this channel. Although I have my own Twitch channel where I do streams every Sunday and they're always bilingual, but mostly in English. Um, I was thinking today we could do something really fun. In ZBrush 2021, which is, I'm so excited uh, and happy about this update. Um, I helped uh, on the beta team and I actually like did a whole piece uh, with the beta and it was really, really, really fun. Like, have you guys tried the new cloth dynamics? Let me know in chat if you've tried the new cloth dynamics. Hey, David Schroeder, how are you? Here, I'm going to pull up Pinterest and I'm going to pull up my, the piece I made so that I can show you guys um, in a little bit. Navarro, yes, working with it now. How do you like it, Navarro? Are, are you getting it? It took me like a, a solid few days to actually get it. Um, dynamics look awesome, didn't try them yet. They are fantastic. Um, like, like, they were a little bit hard to get in the beginning, for me anyway, but now that there's tutorials and stuff out, 10 out of 10, no complaint. Um, where was I going? I said I was going to Pinterest, right? It's good once you were cut, it's limitations. Oh yeah, that's like everything though, right? I'm going to pull up a Pinterest board of animals so that we can pick one uh, to make today. You guys want to help me pick? And while we're picking, we can talk about speed sculpting, observational skills. Maybe I'll introduce myself properly. <laughs> I know Chadwick Boseman, man. That was unexpected for me. Let me zoom in a few times. Oops. I zoomed in chat. So here I have a board of animals that I really like. These are all mammals. Um, and I was wondering if I'm gonna scroll down and you guys can take a pick what we're gonna do today. Unless I've already done it, in which case we won't do it. We got like really slender dogs, cool a cool lion. Um this thing. Whatever that is. Can you guys see that properly? Jojo! Job! A horse! Oh, we did a horse recently, but we could still do a horse. David, hi! Default man, what's up? What about Great Dane? Oh, a Great Dane could be a good one. Let's see. Great Danes are gorgeous, right? My uncle had an enormous one. I mean, they're all enormous, let's be honest. Uh, my uncle had an enormous one at his farm. But it, 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 it looked scary, but it just wanted love. I'm down to do a Great Dane if you guys are down. Lion or Big Cat would be cool. Love the muscular forms. Oh my god, yes. But it takes so long, too. Nice books you have there. Thank you, Luciano. I appreciate it. Um... And they're all like arts or game related to these are gorgeous scooby doo <laughs> lion or big cat oh we cool. already read that one um all right let's do a big great big dane then 
Um, okay, just give me one sec. We're back and we're this right this right here uh is a little software called pure ref it's free to download and it's basically a floating window that you can put on top of any of your software uh and i use for zbrush it's oops it's wonderful um i recommend getting it for your reference so i'm just gonna go in here now um and just kind of like change my great dane search so that so that i go to tools size large that way all the images I find are going to be high quality, or at least higher quality. And then all you have to do is just drag straight from the browser into Pure Ref. And now you have it with you so that you can sculpt, um, so that you can sculpt while looking at your reference. It's really easy peasy. Um, <laughs> this one's funny. So we have to like kind of like two three quarter views here. Um, let's get a front view. Default man, I don't understand your language, but enjoy the stream. Thank you, default man. I appreciate it. Oh, this one's adorable. Oh, this one is pretty good. A pretty good match, I think, for these. I, so whenever I'm looking for reference, I, I look for reference in stream a lot, so I've said this a thousand times, but I always try to keep it um, simple. So three quarters, um, frontal and like profile, like side profile, I think is enough to get you started. Too much reference is actually worse for your sculpting, in my opinion, and that's because I get really caught up in the details of each one. So say one of the dogs has like big cheekbones or something uh, and it's I'm, I'm looking at like five different ones from the front so now I don't know what to what to apply uh, when I'm working the front view and then I just get really confused um, so I'm gonna keep it simple today this is not my favorite front view so I'm gonna see if I can find another one but if not I just want to get sculpting it's a nice Saturday morning for where I am I just want to get sculpting Doberman? Oh, Doberman was a good one too. Maybe next time. Pure Ref is great, Jimmy. <laughs> Look at this one. Face is too heavy. I think we're good to start. So this is the Venezuela? I, I don't speak Spanish necessarily, but... I do speak Portuguese. Alright, so let's get started. I'm going to start with a Sphere 3D. I'm going to drag that in, press edit so that we can start modeling. Uh, first things first, I'm going to change the default the default red material to basic material. Uh, otherwise, uh, all my sculpting friends will fight me. Um, um, your last stream created turned out great in the render. Commented on the forum. Oh, which one? Thank you, Navarro. Thank you much, Achija. All right, we are getting started here. Oh, one important thing. Uh, I'm going to click Make Poly Mesh 3D so that I have like full options when it comes to geometry and stuff like that uh, with this. I'm going to start off by using Snake Hook. And the reason I'm going to do that instead of Move is that Snake Hook gives me so much flexibility. And I just find that I can really crank out shapes uh, and like the basic forms really, really fast with Snake Hook. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys will agree. I, I find that I used to use um, I used to use Move Brush for everything, but now I use Snake Hook for for like big forms and then Move for fi for refining. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this one so that it's like kind of more horizontal. Here a little to the ground, you know. I'm just kind of gonna start drawing in a, a snout here. Kind of just pull out a neck here. Right now it looks like a gun that's melting. 
melting gun technique is what I call this. It's kind of like, oh, somebody's knocking on my door. That's unexpected. I was not expecting guests at this time. You're going to have to wait. This is the front view. And it's just kind of, I'm basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the different views, like the different primary views, I guess, front side, three quarters, and I'm going to try to match the reference um, so that it doesn't look like a melting gun anymore. Hey Pedro, hey Michael. Uh, it was on Zebra Central Aspect of Wealth, you called it? Oh, uh, was it the, the Medusa one? Yeah. What brings you guys here today? <laughs> what are you guys up to? Um, I always hear that a lot of people put these streams on when they're working, so if you guys are working on something, what is it on the Saturday? Looks kind of like a duck. It's melting gun slash duck technique. Kind of like, I'm not being very precious about this, you know, honestly, like I'm kind of just building the canvas on which to sculpt right now. Um, really, is, it's not a big deal right now. You see, like, I am not even caring about the topology, like we have this enormous pinch right there. Just, you just kind of continue, you know, you chill. For some reason, my chair is really uncomfortable today. Back to snake hook. I'm just gonna pull out kind of like the the shape of a nose, just so we can see where there would be a nose normally. I'm gonna kind of push in the um, lower jaw slash where where the jowls aren't. And I did have to look up the real name for this part. But yeah, just like kind of. Start defining the jowls and the lower jaw. And just like very softly. This, the, I like to add little landmarks like this um, so that I can better visualize and guide my own eye about where things are and where they're supposed to go. And kind of start pushing in where I think the eyes should go. I'm just kind of create cavity, just the gentle cavity from the front. May I ask where you're from? I'm from Brazil. Thank you, Jay Murphy, Jay Murphy, for responding. Hi, Fry. How are you? All right, let's take a better look now at the side view again. Kind of just like my technique is really to just kind of visit the different sides and spend a little time there, at least for blocking trying to get the proportions to look right. Um, the proportions right now are probably the most important part. Proportions and silhouettes, really, it's what I focus on when I'm blocking. But Google, when I search for Ana Carolina, Ana Carolina, Brazilian singer-songwriter. That's millionaire songwriter and singer. Um, actually I listened to her, like I know who, who the Google search is for and um, it's, I like her music. <laughs> um, you have to search my last name to find me. Or art. Like along with Anne Caroline. I'm gonna use the move brush to just the move brush gives you this cool ability. I don't know if you guys know about this. This is a pro tip right here. The move brush um, lets you drag, you know, everybody knows how to use the move brush. But if you press Alt and you drag, you actually just pull or pull uh, perpendicularly to the 
to the mesh basically like you pull on the normal and it's really really useful for example like if i'm trying to do the eyebrow instead of like pulling up and now it's going up so now i gotta pull forward um i can just press alt and pull and then it will just come out um perpendicular to the rest of the mesh it's really useful it's a nice tool uh for blocking out your silhouettes because you can work like like look at where the big mouse is the one with the sphere, the circle on it i can work here but be changing the silhouettes here so i can go like whoop, and just look at the silhouettes and see how it changes it's a little bit much eyebrows but still why is my cursor like this i don't know what's it like Have you got a custom windows pointer because the cursor bug? Oh, honestly, when I look at it in ZBrush, it looks fine. When I look at it in OBS, it looks like it has lines on it. So I think it's an OBS bug more than a ZBrush bug. How many hours do you sculpt a day? Uh, it depends on the day. Some days I sculpt like many, many hours. Some days I don't sculpt at all. Um, and that's because my main function is not to be a sculptor. So I spend a lot of time doing other things um, like, like blueprinting in Unreal, level design, things like that. Um, unfortunately and also fortunately, I like doing it. It's just that it means that I don't get spent as much time building one skill as I do the um, as I try to grow all the skills that I have. Kind of putting a little chin in. You'll notice that again. I'm not freaking out about um, topology right now. Try to add a little um, flatter area right here. We need to add ears soon, like things like that. We need those kinds of landmarks so that we can better understand what the heck's going on with our model. At least that's what I think. Sorry, I missed a lot of chats here. I searched your work before the stream, it's awesome. Thank you, Jamie. Sort of off topic, but is Dynamesh still the best option to combine two meshes? I've been doing that, then duplicating, zero meshing, then projecting all the detail back after subdividing. Um, mm, I feel like there's so many different ways to do it. Um, it depends on my needs. Sometimes I'll join them with Dynamesh, sometimes I'll join them like in Maya or something. Um, I feel like Dynamesh is still a good way to do it though. I project detail down all the time. Okay, so I'm going to... I think today I'm going to use Dynamesh. Dynamesh has come up a lot. Uh, if you guys know my stream, you know that I always flip-flop between like 15 different techniques for doing things. Um, and I do that because it's more fun. So like depending on what you guys want to learn, I'll do Dynamesh or Sculptress or something else. See spheres versus like other things. So... Um, what do you- I'll, I'll ask you guys, let you guys pick. For this mesh, do you want me to do... Um, Sculptures Pro or Dynamesh? Answer in chat. Is the satin material new or am I just tripping? There, there might be some sort of OBS bug going on right now because I don't have a satin material. My cursor is messed up, my... Let's see here. 
No, it looks fine on the stream for me. Martin, how are you? Where did you start in the industry? Did you attend art school? Um, I did. I did attend art school. Uh, I went to the Art Institute of Houston. Oh, by the way, my Wacom tablet has a bug right now where it sometimes freezes up ZBrush like this. Um, so sometimes I have to restart it. I still haven't figured out um, how to fix the bug. So I'm just gonna save it. No big deal. It's it's I don't know why the tablet does that. It's just like it freaks out and then when when I come back to ZBrush it's frozen like that. Sorry. I'm just saving. Um, but yeah, the question I didn't answer. Where did you study this year? You attend art school. So I've I've always like been an artist my whole whole life. Um, my whole life I was an artist. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like distracted. Um, and I wanted to be a graphic. No, not really a graphic designer. I wanted to be like a fashion designer. But I always loved art for games. And. Uh, when I moved to Houston, I decided to go to art school at the Art Institute. Um, it wasn't actually that good, but you know what, it worked out. Uh, and I wanted to be a character artist. Uh, first I wanted to be a concept artist, then I wanted to be a character artist. And then, towards the end of my education, I decided, like literally right at the end, like a month before graduation, I decided that I wanted to be a technical artist. Um, so I started practicing for that. I started training to be a technical artist. And sorry, guys. Um, and so I I graduated. I continued training to be a technical artist, and I got my first job in the industry like sixty days later, and. It was as a technical artist, kind of like a very junior though, because I knew nothing. And from there, I kind of started practicing ZBrush on the side, mostly. But yeah, basically, um, I whenever I got my first job, it was making VR training simulations um, for like serious applications, like safety training, uh, teaching people how to do stuff. Stuff like that. Uh, hope you're feeling better. Had a good week. Doggo starting to feel good. Dyna. Okay, you voted Dynamesh. Oh wait. Okay, so one Dynamesh, two Dynamesh, three Dynamesh, one Sculptress, Dynamesh. Dyna okay, Dynamesh one. Let's just say Dynamesh one. So we're gonna do Dynamesh. Yay! That is a change of pace because usually sculpt like last time Sculptress won. Um, let's go ahead and do some dynameshing here. I'm gonna leave the resolution as is. Oh, that's so high. So, really important in my workflow is that we start dynamesh off low. Like, one of the biggest mistakes you can make with your sculpt is to go too high poly too soon. Trust me. Like, whenever you go too high poly too soon, you start getting, like, uh, lumpiness in your model. A uh, bunch of, like, ugly things. <clears throat> It makes it really hard to control, um, to control. So I'm gonna basically cut this like moon sort of shape into the mask. I'm gonna just pull it forward here. So basically I'm creating the shape of the flap of the ear. This is slightly different than how I usually do it, but I think it's better. That way I'll get this, um, this nice contour here. Go ahead and snake hook that and see how it turns out. It doesn't have to look pretty yet. Again, we're still blocking. We're basically creating the canvas on which to sculpt. Really, it's it's not that important that it's perfect right now. Let's 
try to see some other points of view of this puppy here. Make his ears larger. And... Oh, that one doesn't count. That one has floppy ears. It's not like super perfect because we, we got a little closeness to here, but you know what? Like the kind of the shape is there, so we're gonna work with it. And diamesh that. And just start pushing this in just for that for organization sakes, really. Boom. Alright, we have the beginnings of dog ears. Did you model that from a primitive? Yes, we started from a sphere not very long ago. Why is she skipping the question? Did I skip your question? Feel free to ask it again. Um, hi, 3D art with Shabad. Habad. Anubhaset thought you had a lot of Jimmy, maybe you could give a sweater or a t-shirt to him and we see cloth dynamics as well. Um, uh, coincidentally, I made a dog outfit um last stream that i was live on my own personal channel by the way guys i have my own personal twitch channel where i stream every sunday at 5 p.m central called anna carolina arts you can see my name right there anna carolina arts i'll post the links later um and i made a little snood for the dog and it was so cute with cloth dynamics and micro poly it was so cute I was bringing to the industry 13 years ago or so, pursued other paths though, and have just recently come back to it It's a, as a hobby during COVID times. Nice, no matter. What, what are you doing? Like, what are you currently working on? It's part of your hobby. Another cool tool to use um, for blocking is that it's Damien Standard. I'll show you guys later. And I'm just gonna thin out the um, snoot. That's the scientific name for the snout, by the way. Just kidding, please don't ever quote that. No. Alright. I think our beginning block out is almost ready to be improved with more defined sculpting anatomy and things like that what do you guys think we need eyeballs <laughs> you know that for sure we need eyeballs it's just like kind of a universal statement huh I'm going to go and take the Damien Standard. In fact, I like to use my Damien Standard with a higher focal shift so that it's more stabby. And I'm going to try to start just kind of like adding a little bit of a shadow where I want the dog eyes to go. And I think mine are a little bit close together. So I mean, we can just move it. It shouldn't be a problem. It be. Actually, I'm not gonna move it, I'm gonna just redo it because we don't have that kind of time. I'm currently stuck making a cloth, a cut in the cloth. Any ideas on how to approach this? Try using, um, the boolean tools oh another thing uh, i'm noticing like i'm trying to just gently smooth and i'm basically taking out all my features that i've made so i'm going to turn the smoothing intensity down so maybe like 30 that way i can still smooth but like it won't make everything go away 
Uh, let's go ahead and add eyeballs to this. I'm gonna add it from the front view. Um, I personally, like everybody else that I know, adds eyeballs by going to append and then they append a sphere and then they move it to the right place and then they mirror it. I just like being lazy and uh, going to insert primitives, choosing a sphere, kind of just dragging it on there. I always make them a little bit bigger than, than I think they have to be. I always make them smaller than the other one. And I'm just gonna try to put this, the, the um, eyeballs where I think they're supposed to go. And then I can just move the rest of the body around. Uh, I'm going to split the last part and boom, I have eyeballs. Um, what do you call this? Snake hook? I was just in the wrong mesh. That happens sometimes. Ana, será que algum dia você poderia fazer uma live em português? Eu faço live em português toda hora. Inclusive, a próxima vai ser. Posso até pesquisar aqui quando vai ser a próxima. Dia 12. Dia 12 de. do mês que vem. Eu vou fazer live em português. Aqui nesse canal, a mesma hora. Why are the curve brushes so horrible to control? I was watching video and he changed his method just so that he didn't have to keep trying to make it work. Oh, I don't know. I, I'm not in control of that, but I don't hate the curve brushes. Like, I think the curve brushes are good. I used the, them a lot for my last project. Like with like um, bracelets and stuff like that. They were awesome because they do this thing where they auto wrap. Really nice. Oh, another thing you want to do when you're using ZBrush is to try your best to never get stuck in one um, angle. Hold on, got a little issue here. Never try to not get stuck in one angle for too long, because uh, that's a really just a really bad habit that I think a lot of people have at least for a while in their lives. Where um, we we like say I'm working the front, so I'll just stay here and I'll be like working the front, working the front, working the front, and I'll never change views. And then when I turn to the side, I'll know or realize that like I messed up the side or something, and it's not good. Like you got to be thinking 360 with. Like, you gotta be thinking 3D with everything you do. Um, which can be, like, it's just the habit to, like, to get in that mindset, you know? I know for me, it was hard to get uh, into that mindset. I'm still not perfect in any way, but um, because I came from a drawing background, and, you know, I, I, it was like, ZBrush is like drawing, but you get to do the multiple angles. Um... I'm just using kind of the Damien standard, but inverted here to just create a little bit of a edge above the eye there. Um, it's like drawing, but then you get stuck in one side as if you would with drawing, you know? Beautiful forms. Thank you, Pedro. And about uh, just personal works, character design, creatures, all that fun stuff. Oh, nice. I'm glad you're working on good stuff. <sighs> I can still Google and find all my work online from way back when ZBrush was V3 and 4 and CG Talk was all the craze. Oh my god. So like, I wasn't even around. I didn't even know 3D art existed when back in that, at that time period. Like seriously. I can't even imagine, um, you know, all the, all the pain and suffering that it was to, to make 3D art back then. You know, now we have things like Topo Gun and, and Houdini and things like that that make everything so much better and easier. Automated tools, yes. What is your guys' opinion on that? Um, like, there's a lot of automation coming for this field, and a lot of people are afraid 
that all this automation is going to take a lot of jobs. What is your opinion on that? Uh, I'm like legit, I'm curious. See, the, the thing, my opinion is that um, perhaps, like, like it's probably going to take some jobs off the market, but it's going to open up jobs somewhere else, like, um, you know, software engineering and stuff like that. But not, that, not just that, but um, I think it's going to open up the door for us to be creatives because machines will never be able to have, like, creative thoughts that much, you know? Oh, well, at least not for now. Okay, so I'm just kind of marking in the eyebrow. I'm going to go ahead and mark in this, like, forehead situation that they have, like, a little line going down the middle. Cute. Very cute. 10 out of 10. Doggo. I feel like the... Um, the forehead, kind of crown of the head area on mine is super short, super tiny. We gotta, we gotta fix that. We gotta make this better. See how much more head he has? <laughs> there. Starting to use a little clay build up to kind of make things a little interesting. Kind of switching between that move, Damien I mean Standard. Kind of just trying to fix all, a lot of mistakes I made earlier. Um, it's really important to try to engage your observational skills. Um, and it's really, really important to focus on uh, a little bit on Sorry, sometimes I get distracted by doing and talking. It's really important to focus on your observation skills and to really, really, really take your time when it comes to blocking in shapes, anatomy, things like that, because this is the make it or break it of your project. You can make all the most amazing pores, the most amazing detail, uh, 10 out of 10 stuff, you know, like if, if your base looks bad, then it's really, really hard to, to for people to look at it and be impressed. They're going to be like, oh, there's something wrong with that, you know. The Uncanny Valley really shines when you don't get, have a good, uh, a good like, base form. So it's just really important to spend some time here. Because I know like a lot of people get a little too excited about skipping on to the next part, you know. I trust me, I understand why it's fun to like add scars and crevices and things like that. It's just not a good idea. <laughs> Probably modeling edge by edge back in the day, <laughs> crying face. <laughs> hydrate. Oh my god, I need to hydrate so badly. I haven't drank any water today. Mm. I missed so much stuff. Oh my god, I am behind in chat. I always choke up at the eyeball phase. The Zane, the Zane, Zoe, Metal. Um, I saw that in this resolution, he still has grid lines. If he's going to make a light character, that he would, like, he would do remove this more eccentric part. If he's going to render in ZBrush, I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. Are Are you trying to say? Um, are you trying to say that like right now, Dog has lines like low poly? He looks low poly. But when I'm gonna render, we want to take off those lines, cause yeah, like we're gonna go up resolution, and then those lines are gonna be almost invisible. Uh, Shubham, if you ever find the answer for that, let me know. Okay, message me. 
Zebrish to my ace, DNS is an absolute nightmare. Still is for some people. Okay, I'm gonna up the resolution here to 64. Oh no. Okay. Something weird happened during that Dynamesh process, uh, but we're back on track now. So let's work on the um, eyelids for a second here. So we're still not high resolution yet, but I'm being very careful about when I choose to um, to go up a little bit. Because like, it's kind of always just, my, my uh, rule of thumb for when to go up subdivision is that you try to get in as much anatomy and as much detail as you can in the lowest subdivision possible. Once that is no longer possible at all, like it's literally not possible anymore, then you can go up one. Um, when I'm speed sculpting, I don't follow that super well. Uh, mostly because I have to like just keep going. I have to go, 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 like make something, you know. Um, but when I'm sculpting something full of work or whatever, I definitely follow <clears throat> that rule. I recommend you guys try it out too, if you haven't yet. taking the clay build up and I like to keep my clay build up uh, with a square alpha um, for sure for sure it's so much more fun to sculpt and it creates very organic shapes when I'm using it so I really like to am I making the model too small let me know if the model's too small on the screen sometimes I do that I like to I like to zoom out a lot because then I can see like the full piece in like the big picture style you know In my opinion is I need to continue complete high school first. I feel like I missed something. That insert primitives trick is so much faster. I know, right? Um, automation is nice, but there will always be a market for stylized art. Per the personality isn't so easily automated. Exactly. I think that's like I think that's why, in order to prepare for that possibility, we need to be smart and we need to focus on things like fundamentals um color theory and just things that enable us to create like creative beautiful art that a computer couldn't replicate you know and i think that way we'll, we'll all profit <laughs> I think it's the years, they are too close. I think you're right. We can definitely change that. I see them from here. Yeah, for sure. I'm sorry if I haven't read your message yet or if I skipped it over it. It's not on purpose. Sometimes it happens. Especially when I'm trying to focus more on the work and um I think I can just move them here and then figure it out. And sometimes I'll, I'll skip a message on accident. So if I if that happens and you noticed that I skipped your message without reading it, just feel free to send it again. He speaks about reference, like you know a lot about dogs in general. Are you like a dog person? I like all animals, uh, but I would like to have a dog and a cat. I already have a cat, but another one. <laughs> my up, my up opinion is that one should never stick to only one software. Automation will still require software controlled by a human. So as long as people go along with the new technology, there will be no problem. Zumbo, la na tempo, eh? Eh, the question is amazing. 
Pergunta polêmica. Dicas para conseguir primeiro freelance. Oh, meu Deus. É... Eu vou dar as dicas super rápido, porque hoje a stream não é em português. É... é muito importante começar fazendo networking. Botar seu portfólio online, botar seu trabalho online. Faz... É... Ter uma boa social media. Tipo assim, postar coisas no Instagram, no Twitter. Muito profissional, hein? Tipo assim, não pode ser só memes, é, nem nada. E, e, e mandando e-mails, conversando com as pessoas e tentando conhecer pessoas. Se quiser, você pode me mandar uma mensagem mais tarde e eu respondo melhor. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you, Martin. Strongest, tudo bem? Love the detail. Oh, thanks. I mean, it's not very detailed yet, but soon. Right now, we're just doing kind of like the base form, primary forms, kind of like anatomy a little bit. I think it's finally happening. I think my like five-year-old tablet finally needs a pen replacement or like a, a pen tab replacement. I'm new. Hi, Mir. I'm glad you're here. Welcome. Da com zebra schnopsi. É bom para cima da roupa mesmo. Ele é bom. Você é natural qual estado? Sou do Rio. Miro, thank you. New office? Hakibara, yes. I moved to Florida. And I have a new office here. Let's work on the um on the jowl situation here, because like I just kind of pulled off um kind of like a little bump, but really the jowls are more complex than that. Um they need to kind of create the mouth corner shape. Kind of just taking the meat standard and chiseling in that shape. We can fix the proportions and all that later. And I'm gonna go around with the negative Damien standard. Kind of create a little bit of flesh there. A little bit of smoothing. Now let's take the move brush and just kind of start making this look more like the reference. And don't worry, like, sometimes I'll get distracted by other parts. Like, if I notice a mistake, I'll try to get rid of the mistake sooner rather than later, because otherwise I might risk forgetting um, to fix it. But that's just me. Like, I know myself, so I know that I'll, I might forget. If you don't forget that kind of stuff, then uh, feel free to just focus on the area you're supposed to be focusing. <laughs> I'm just kind of using my imagination here. Um, imagining that this comes up here like that. Now we have something that's more jowly, that makes more sense. I'm gonna take the Damien standard again and I'm gonna zoom into this uh, part right under the neck here. I'm gonna start taking a look at how I can make this happen so that it looks like skin folds coming out. I love, 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 love using a large Damien standard with maybe like a little bit less intensity than, than the default. Let's move that. Um, and I like using it uh, as Z ads and Z sub combined so that we can make like these nice complex wrinkles, things like that. Let's give it a shot. So. Gonna just pull out the yeah. You got got a start of like a nice clean like skin wrinkle fold right there. And that's just with the yeah, it's so easy. It's like it's my favorite technique for this. And then I can always go in and like make it more apparent with like Z sub. 
can remove that here. Go smooth. I felt like I understood that even though I don't speak Portuguese. <laughs> Knowing Spanish helps a little when trying to understand Portuguese. Raven, hi. Yeah, I moved from Australia to Florida recently too. Oh goodness, how do you like Florida? Are you a dog or a cat person? I used to be a dog person. Like I was always a dog person, always, 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 right? Uh, I like was born to have dogs. Um, I used to spend my free time as a kid reading books on how to train dogs and I didn't even have a dog. But then one day I met my cat. <laughs> it all changed when I met the love of my life. Uh, and my cat was just, if you guys don't know, I have this cat called Sparkles. He's not here right now, but he could be. Maybe at the end of the stream. At the end of the stream, I will reward you guys for sticking with me with some Sparkles. How about that? Um, he is amazing. Like, he is a cat, but he's like dog-like in personality. He comes when you whistle or you say his name. Uh, he always wants attention. He's so sweet. He's really not obnoxious. Uh, he's not like he's not like the stereotypical cats where you like he doesn't like you, <laughs> you know, um, that much. But yeah, I met him and now I love cats, so I'm like half and half. But the thing is that I've come to have a lot of appreciation for cats. Like they are so smart and so uh, they have such good survival instincts. Like I. I can leave my cat, like say I have to go out for two days, right? I can leave my cat with a lot of water and food and when I come back there will still be water and food but if I did the same thing to a dog, they would just eat it all in like five seconds right after I leave and then they would like starve for the next two days, like that wouldn't be good. Anyway, that's just cats have better survival instincts. You know? But dogs are more loyal, I know, there's so much to it. It's hard to have like a guard cat. Anyway, I feel like I went on a huge digression with that. What number is the software? Onde coloca as referências? Pure ref. O nome está bem aqui na tela. I just read that comment. I'm going to screenshot it in one sec. For reasons. Uh, how do you put the images in ZBrush? Can you do a demo? Thanks. I actually did the one earlier. So this here is not ZBrush. It's called Pure Ref. The name is right here. Pure Ref. Okay. Like, look at it. The name is right there on the screen. And it's a free software that you can get online where you can just drag images from the browser onto it. It's perfect. It's easy. You can just change the images. You can make them rotate. It's so easy. But it's not a part of ZBrush, it's just an amazing compliment to ZBrush, so I recommend finding it online and downloading it, it's free. But you can donate, so make sure you donate. Uh, John, hello. Rich, hi Anna, do you have a focal length that you normally use, or do you set it by project? I set it by project, Rich. In fact, in this one I haven't been using uh, perspective, but I always say, <laughs> God, I'm right now I feel like a hypocrite. I always say it's just at least to use perspective or at least switch back and forth uh, because this is from personal experience say you're making an asset for a game like a dog face for a game right and your engine let's say you're bringing it into unreal or unity uses like 50 focal length or whatever um, and you're using orthographic the whole time you're making it when you bring it into unity or, or unreal you're gonna get like a nasty nasty surprise uh, when you realize that your model doesn't look exactly the way you thought it did because you know I don't think game engines like most games are not orthographic, you know, they all have perspective so um, What what I recommend is one when sculpting you figure out you you google What is the default focal length for a camera because like most of? Camera shots are like they have some sort of like normal focal length um, so I would use that when sculpting so that I can match the reference, but then I would switch to orthographic when needed and then I would also switch the exact focal length of my game or my renderer as well. 
so that you can see how ex exactly how it's gonna look in the final uh, result. Trust me on that one because not just that, but I did VR. And when you're doing VR, um, you don't really get to control the focal length in game whatsoever, so you're kind of screwed. Congrats on the new job and best of luck. Uh, thank you, Haki Barber. Appreciate it. Hi, Saeed. Muito bom, Ana Carioquinha. Eu sou do coração Brasil, Centro-Oeste. I am so. I'm on a great day in someone of my size. Manipulative is the word you're looking for when describing cats. Aww. I do feel like Sparkles manipulates me, but like he doesn't even know he's doing it because he's so cute and he's not bad. He's not bad. The only downside of using perspective, in my opinion, is um, is that it, it messes with masking a little bit. Like, so if you try to do like a mask lasso you might select weirdly on the other side but other than that it's really it's fine hey jay-z brush princess how are you i use pure for everything <laughs> i like your makeup today thank you i recognize you from thumbnail without seeing the cam yet nice i love your style <laughs> I think my style needs an update. It's too recognizable. It's getting most artists would kill for a recognizable style. And here I am like, shit, I need to, I, I don't like that style. Like so a nice big Damien standard can be a great tool for blocking in anatomy, like 10 out of 10. Let's turn down the intensity even more to like 11 and just kind of take a big, big Damien standard to this model. Kind of like start adding in like muscle definition and stuff. Just trying to go as I understand it. One really good thing for you to do, uh, especially if you're starting out, is to kind of take the time to maybe like open up Photoshop and draw on your references to try to understand them a little bit better. Um, but I did not do that this time. But I think if, especially if I was doing a, um, especially if I was doing um, a likeness, I would definitely open up Photoshop and kind of like go over the proportions of the face so that I can better re uh, represent them in my sculpt. Your graph is free and very perfect. I agree. Are there benefits of using your graphic? Yeah, um, when you, um, when you uh, are masking, I think ortographic is better. So example here, I'm gonna use mask lasso to try to make a a circle. God, for some reason that's not working out. On a mask out part of the ear. Well, apparently this time it's working great. Never mind what I said. Maybe they updated it with uh, 2021 and I didn't notice. Are you gonna use fiber mesh? No, no. Especially because it's a short haired dog. Like, I, I think I want to let the anatomy shine through, you know. It's a good opportunity to let, let your anatomy shine through.
like I think it I think it's an important step to like take it into Photoshop maybe like take a few dog skulls into Photoshop and just trying to like understand what you're working on a little bit better get acquainted with the names of the muscles things like that you don't have to memorize them for everything you do it's just I think it's better to have that awareness of why things are doing what they're doing in your reference you know What do you think is the most natural lens that would fit human eye view? Somehow I feel like many VR has quite strong lens. Oh man, I don't know. I, honestly, I couldn't answer that question without doing my research first. Uh, I would just look it up. Um, what's the focal distance of the human eye or whatever, like focal shift, all that good stuff. Because you know that there's an answer for that. And then I would go from there. Like this needs to be a little bit. So one thing is that I don't mind leaving my shapes just a little bit bumpy because I find that that creates a very organic feel that I enjoy. But you have to make sure that when you're doing like bumps and lumps and things like that, that they're that they are on purpose and not accidental. One thing I hate making is ears. I feel like I need to take a weekend and just make ears, like just non-stop make ears into all like VDM brushes so I never have to make ears again and then I can sell them. Like, I, they are annoying. <laughs> I hate them. I hate them. Like, human ears are fine, but like, they're only fun for the first like, few times you make them and then after that... After that, it's not quite the same feeling anymore. Thank you, Mike Brady. Super dog mask. What's your favorite thing to model? I have this thing about frogs. When I'm stuck, I model a frog. Oh my god, Navarro, that is so adorable. That is so adorable. Um, what is the thing that I like to model the most? Torsos. Human torso. There's nothing that makes me happy quite like modeling a human torso. Saeed, very good sculpt today, Anna. Thank you, Saeed. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'm doing a big appreciate. We're almost ready to go up a little bit so that we can actually finish this in time. Although I've only been streaming for an hour. Wow. We've only been doing this for an hour, so I actually have more time than I thought. Time flew, man. It's a Doberman dog game. It uses a um, Great Dane. I hate eyes. Ears are fun. Hi, Foxy. Foxy. Martin, do you have any tips on getting the human head shapes and forms right? I always jump on details, and before I realize it, I have a very ugly head, and it's difficult to fix it without starting over. I'll address your questions in two ways. Um, Tips on getting the human head shapes and form right. So the first thing you have to do is just uh, make a pact with yourself. You're not moving on to detailing secondary and tertiary forms until you are done with the primary forms. So that's just something right off the bat. Promise to yourself. Sit down for a sculpt for like a weekend or something. Be like, I am not going above 32 res dynamesh today. And I'm not going above like, like beyond primary forms. That is the first thing you need because um, 
you need to really focus on the beginning and then and then you got to start focusing on like planes proportions silhouettes those three things are gonna carry you a lot of the way when you're making your primary forms um so focus on those things make sure you're like maybe not just go going right in from like your reference like open it up in photoshop draw on it understand it make like measurements so like take uh, the eye size for example and measure out how many eye lengths is the nose how many eye lengths away is the mouth from the nose things like that that are really going to help you understand what you're doing and then maybe like open up a a reference of like anatomy for sculptors or something um check out what they what they have to say on it and then just do it like just go for the primary forms and don't stop until you think they're like super 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 close to the uh, reference and then from there you can go to your secondary forms and okay the second part that i want to address that question as is um one big thing is that if you are going too far in your sculpt right and and now you don't know how to fix it because you made too many details and you your primary forms are wonky and you feel like the only way to fix it is to restart there is one workflow that will protect you from having to restart and it's very simple it's subdivision workflow so if you have um, subdivisions and you have your details on your highest subdivision, then you don't have to worry. You can just go to your lower subdivision, change your primary forms there, and your details will be preserved in the higher subdivision. Um, so you just have to, you know, learn how to do that workflow. Don't just hop right into Dynamesh. Don't do any of that. So zero measure is your friend um, and stuff like that. It's, it's not that bad. By the way, guys, I'm gonna open up here. And I haven't posted my links this whole time, and I feel bad. I'm trying so hard to find them. So guys, I'm going to post my links in chat uh, for my own personal Twitch channel where I stream every Sunday ZBrush stuff. We have a fun time, we share tutorials, we do critiques, stuff like that. Twitter, Instagram, and ArtStation, okay? The links are there. Uh, make sure to follow me if you're enjoying the stream. Uh, make sure to follow this channel if you're enjoying this channel. But yeah, make sure to, you know, do that. <laughs> if you have any questions and you want to ask them in private, you can message me on... The best way is... Um, the best way is... Instagram or Discord. I always get back on Instagram and Discord. So I'm going to post my my Discord uh, link as well for you guys to join. Boom. Diego, you are amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know why I made that thought. Just you are very high regulation, Anna. You are very professional. <laughs> high re What does high regulation mean? Uh, dark witch dreams. Hi, Anna. I woke up a little late this morning, so I missed the beginning of your stream, but I'm glad to catch some of it. Oh, hi. I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm glad you're here. Just, you know, better late than never. Who was a substance painter? Seeing consecutive. When was the British 2021 pre released? Boy, boy, do I have happy news for you. It was already released. So you can just go update on the site. Like literally it was released like three weeks ago or more. No, yeah, like. Uh, thank you for your advice. You really help a lot. You're welcome, Martin. I'm here to help. So like, you know, I, I'm here to sculpt, but honestly, I'm here to help. So if you have any questions uh, that you think I can answer, like feel free to ask, you know, there's nothing wrong with asking. Um, today I'm prioritizing questions asked in English, but yeah. Nothing wrong. While we make a doggo here. I think it's almost time to zero mesh. What do you guys think? I think it's zero mesh time. Um, the reason I'm going to do zero mesh is very simple. So one, I'm going to... 
demonstrate that workflow I was talking about, the one where you can do low subdivision and high subdivision, subdivision workflow basically. Um, and it's, it's way better for you to be able to detail and not lose um, your ability to work on primary forms. Plus it's better for your PC because you know you don't have to be working on high poly all the time. Uh, and not just that, but it'll create better edge loops so that I can actually sculpt like if the eyelids, for example. So I'm gonna go take like a, a two minute break and then when I come back, we're gonna do zero meshing, okay? I'm gonna just... I will be right back. Let me see how I turn on that be right back thing.
I am back guys. Hello, hello. Hey, Ashley, how are you? I'm glad you're here. Long time no see. Do you practice anatomy? Yes, Akash. With everything I make, I practice anatomy. Sometime, uh, just don't know what to do. Even watched enough reference. Um, just take it slow, maybe start simple, like, there is such a thing as too much reference. Like, if you just soak up too much reference, you can get confused or discouraged. So, like, for example, I try to keep it simple. So for this one, I am just have front, side, and three quarters, and that's it. Oh, Did you work on Avatar? No, I did not work on Avatar. For, for one, I make, um, I make games, not anything else. But Avatar is like my favorite thing ever, so I wish, right? <laughs> no, she didn't work on Avatar, that was fan art. Thank you, Jay Murphy. <laughs> uh, Pinterest gives me a headache, too much references. I'd say it's really important to narrow down. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys pick. So I said we were gonna do subdivisions um, what, before I left, but um, since I'm letting you guys pick, do you want to keep going with Dynamesh and just go higher? Or do you want to go to subdivisions? Vote in chat. I made some iced coffee. Haven't had coffee in a long time. Um, I like to have a, a tea now. Somebody said subdivisions. That's good enough for me. One vote. Yeah, two votes for subdivisions. That's good enough for me. Uh, so how we're gonna do this is first things first. I'm going to duplicate this mesh. And the reason I'm gonna do that is that so if I need to, I can project from it. Um, let me turn off the eyeballs. <laughs> It's always a surprise when I get to see what it looks like with the eyeballs. So I'm gonna use this brush called Zero Mesher Guides. And what it does is it allows you to draw on where you want your uh, edge loops to go. So for example, I want edge loops around the eye here. So I'm going to whoop, try my best and draw that. I'm going to add a little crease right here. Doop. Right there along the, along the mouth. I am so... This is like the hardest part of ZBrush for me. Ooh. Well, I just got rid of it entirely, huh? Um, God, drawing straight lines. I can do it on paper. I don't know what it is with ZBrush. You can hear me, though. Or is that just... Maybe I just need to do smaller strokes here. Good way to fix the problem. I'm just gonna kind of. I'm not being like. I'm not trying to get a perfect retop out of this, like for animation. I'm just trying to get it so that I can get nice clean lines in these areas that I need. For some reason, this didn't close. Looks like it closed now. So I'm going to turn on polyframe. That's not necessary, it's just I like to see what the what the um, result is. And I'm going to go to Zero Mesher. I should probably turn Dynamesh off. Zero Mesher, can you see that? I'm gonna do about half. Zero Mesh, let's see how that turns out. The eye doesn't look good. Everything else is good enough, though. I don't know why the eye turned out so bad. Slightly better. Not perfect, like... 
what we're trying to avoid is things like this that are going to cause a pinch. You see this, uh, it's not a perfect edge loop. It's got a, um, I forgot what this is called, like a th three edge point. Like a star. Look at this. Awful. Horrible. But it could still work. <laughs> but what we're doing today, which is just a speed sculpt. Uh, normally I wouldn't settle for this. Rafael, hello there. I'm a total beginner on ZBrush and sculpting in general. How should I approach learning anatomy? Um, I'm going to give you the advice that I've been giving uh, this whole time. Real fast, before I go on, I'm going to project the uh, original model onto this so that I can get a little more detail, so it's more defined. And then I'm going to go up a subdivision. Maybe project it again. Okay, I feel like that's close to what we had before. Turn the eyeball back on. This is a, our base, I guess, for for working on this book right now. Uh, how should I approach learning anatomy? So I've been saying this all stream. Um, basically, start simple. Make sure that. Uh, you focus, like your first focus should be on primary forms. That is, um, I don't know how to describe it. I can find a picture. Let's Google it. Hopefully it doesn't show up anything bad. All right. This is a good one. Mm. This is a good one. So, this is like the primary forms, basically the basic um, shape and silhouettes of your model and the proportions and things like that. So you gotta focus on that quite a bit before you can move on. A lot of people want to just like half-ass this and then move on to like putting pores on, and that's a really bad idea. So make sure you're focusing on proportion, silhouettes, uh, observation, and stuff like that. When you're starting an anatomy piece, take your reference and bring it into Photoshop and draw over it. Figure out the sizes. Like if you've never looked this up or learned this, um, there's there are ways for artists to measure things. Uh, like for example, for the human body, people use heads. So you take the size of the head and you like see how many heads the person, how tall the person is in heads. What's the distance between one shoulder to the other in heads and stuff like that and then you go on from there and you just make it into like a really simple breakdown for yourself um and stuff like that by the way i don't know who whose art this is but thank you for your contribution to the stream person um it doesn't say and this is another good one so you, you gotta get this part right in order for anything else to look right. No matter how good you are at detailing, it's never gonna look right unless you figure out the basic shapes first. This is great content. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Wei Young. Uh, still image the 3D prints. Um, I never 3D print. How long have you been modeling 3D? Like, like six years? No, six years is too long. Five, six years. Is my guess. I've never ever like I get asked this question every time, and I never stop to think about the answer. Like, I've never stopped to do the math ever. So from projecting, I got a lot of lumpiness that I don't want. But it's worth it for the lumpiness I do want. Okay, let's focus on the eye for a second. This is very similar to the eye I did the other day. I'm just gonna start by like contouring the area where the eye meets the um, eyeball, or the eyelid meets the eyeball, just to make it straighter and nicer. Then I'm gonna use Damien Standard uh, Inverted and just pull out a little bit of eyelid here. 
and I take the in the standard normal and just cut in this um through that like and not tear duct menis not, not meniscus either. What is this called? The inner eye? Do you have a Twitch or Instagram? I sure do have both those things. Uh, I will post in chat for you. And for everybody else too. If I can just find chats. That, um, posting on one place should um, ideally get it everywhere else. So guys, I just posted my links in chat. I have uh, my own Twitch channel where I stream ZBrush every single Sunday at 5 p.m. Central Time. It's it's really fun and like really informative. And there's a lot of pro artists that come to that uh, to watch, help, hang out. Um, and then there's my Instagram uh, where I always post if I'm going live, stuff like that. So if, uh, and also I answer uh, messages. So if you have any questions for me, you want to ask it privately or like just hang out or whatever, make sure to follow me on Instagram, send me a message. Twitter is uh, where I post lots of things. I don't even know. I don't even get into a, an art station right there to see my, my work. Um, I see them send it again. Just going to create this like crease here at the end of the line. And then another crease, it's like right here. Make sure that the eyelid makes sense with the eye. Um, one common mistake is to accidentally have your eyelids not be round around the eye. Instead, there will be like some other shape. So one way to fix that is to just look from above and below and see if it's if you are getting like that round shape that kind of contours the eye. Clean it up a little bit. Damien Standard, you see how much I'm using the Damien Standard to create these eyes? It's fantastic. Or little areas like this that have creases, that have bends. Because you can pull it out or pull it in, or push it in, <laughs> pull it in. Um, and it's just, it works so well. Kind of creating these nice little skin folds here. Then I just kind of revisit the overall eye shape. You can't forget, like you can't get carried away with details and then forget the overall shapes. So kind of take a big move. -ish. Make sure to look at it from all angles, guys. Or you'll regret it. Thank you, I can't find out what's wrong with my model. Send it to me on Discord. The link for my Discord is right there. If you send it to me and tag me or like send it directly to me, I'll take a look for you. What drawing tablet do you recommend to start 3D modeling? Um, that is a very easy question. Whatever you can afford. Yeah, like I have a, a simple Intuos drawing tablet. Not, it's not luxurious, but it's my favorite. Like. It costs eighty dollars. Um, in a world where tablets can cost up to like two thousand dollars. Oh no, I messed it up. Remember, I said that it had a bug. So this one's like eight years old. So it's gotten so old that now it bugs out, and then every once in a while it, it messes the brush up. So I can't keep working. That's my tablet. So see, I touched my tablet and that worked. It's funny, like it's a very ironic moment for that to have happened while I'm recommending it, but it's just so old. 
Oh, no, I think I have to get a new one. I'm not gonna save this tool just in case. Um, I forgot to name the, the first one, so I'm just naming this too. I tweeted you, uh, I'm stuck and I don't know what to make frogs. What program do you use to retop? Right now I use Maya to retop. Sorry about that guys, like, yeah, I don't think it's ZBrush this fault, so I think it's just my tablet. Like, for real. Yeah, Anna, you're the best. That is so nice. You guys are being so nice to me today. What the heck? Oops, I don't want to save fast. I want to load. We're back. <laughs> Remind me not to pick up my tablet again. I might have the same problem. I just plug it in and plug it back in. So it's it's the same problem. It kind of like freezes up ZBrush. I've tried plugging it in and like unplugging it, but or vice versa. But but it really didn't. Let's take a look at the dog nose. Huh? Very important feature for dogs. What is a dog without his nose? It's kind of like rounding out the nostril shape. I'm definitely gonna need to go up a subdivision to be able to work this better. Have you ever worked or thought about working in the game industry? I've always worked for serious games. I consider that to be part of the game industry. Good evening, Sumerian King. It's actually like morning or afternoon here. Do you work as a concept artist? No, I don't. Start of material red wax. Ah. Creative designer, your job is great. Thank you. Do you use a Cintiq at work? No. I don't like Cintiqs. Um, that's something about me. I hate, hate, hate Cintiqs. Uh, I won't even get into why. Because it's personal, like, if you like it or not, like, it's, it's really personal. I don't want to influence people. Uh, or anything. So even if they were to give me a Cintiq, um, I wouldn't want it. <laughs> Which sounds super bratty, but it's just bad for my posture, it's bad for my carpal tunnel, it's... I, my, my hand is now in front of my work, you know? It's looking a little better. Cool, I'm sculpting a goat right now. I love sculpting goats. It's almost as fun as sculpting dogs. Actually, it's more fun than sculpting dogs. 
I don't know if you remember, but I mentioned I was practicing anatomy and I decided to scalp the leg every day. I've done 40 so far. Oh my god, how are they looking? Do you want to send them to me via Discord or put, post them on my Discord channel? Do you think about skeleton instruction when making animal? Yes, for sure, Akash. For sure, because the skeleton drives so much of the shape. The forms, you know? Amazing. Really important to think about the skeleton. I need to straighten out the, the top of the snout here just a little bit because it's looking a little um, animated and like, like stylized. Bye! <laughs> I had a guest. Did you go to art school or are you mainly self taught? Uh, yes and yes. <laughs> Okay, let me explain. Um, sorry. I did go to art school. Okay, so don't get me twisted. But it was really bad. And for most of it, we had to be very independent. Oh my god, it happened again. I did again. I moved my tablet. God, maybe if I... I'm going to take your advice and unplug it. Plug it back in. And maybe that will fix everything. Maybe it's because it's uh, set to a lower power USB. Let me give you one sec, guys. We've always technical difficulties. <laughs> Every day there's technical difficulties. Let's see if that did anything. Mm. I don't know why, like maybe it's, um, so certain USB ports on your computer have different uh, energy levels that they provide for your um, technology. Pieces of hardware, I guess. And sometimes if you choose the wrong one, things start to malfunction. Pro tip. I'm gonna just do it again. Sorry guys, like, I'm going to get this fixed. Um, there's gotta be... Like, uh, maybe I'll borrow somebody's tablet and see if it still happens. Um, I'll fix this. Uh, I haven't used this in Tiki yet, but I love drawing tablets so much that I don't know if I would want one. Uh, that's good. Or, or, you know, I'm glad you like them. Did you go to- oh, I already read that one. Don't you care for Cintiq? What type of tablet do you prefer for personal work? Uh, I just use simple drawing tablets. I'm not gonna pick it up again, cause like, it's malfunctioning right now. We're back. I just can't touch this. Well, they still aren't good, but I'm improving, which is good. Yeah, that's all you can hope for and strive for is improvement, right? Not perfection or anything. So you're on the right track. Just by the fact that you've tried so much, means you're a hard worker. You know, I think I'll, it's hard to stop a hard worker. I just have to kind of reset my tool options from earlier.
Wait, you never finished saying why you left art school. Oh, I didn't leave art school. I finished. It's just that it wasn't so good. So we had to be our own teachers kind of thing. So even though I did go to art school, most of the things I know are uh, self-taught. Did finish. I do have the degree. I think the blue USB slots are USB 3, the fastest USB slot, so you have the option to plug into that. I have already too many things plugged into those, but I'm, whenever the stream is over, I'm gonna go and see what's the most important uh, items I have and plug them in. That's a good pro tip. How do you figure out which ones are best? Uh, what are you referring to? Uh, I asked because I have a lovely yarn and I really love it. Nice, I've never tried it yet. How come, uh, how to come out from art block? Like hitting a wall when doing some sculpts. Um, you know, I find that when it comes to art block, it's art block is so personal. Like what brings me out of art block might not bring you out of art block. Um, but you know, that's just part of it. What I like to do nowadays, now I'm a little older and wiser, is I like to just take time off if, like, uh, of course, art block only counts if it's personal work. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, art block only counts if it's personal work, right? You can't have art block at your professional job. Like, that's not even a thing. And you're gonna find out, like, once you have a, your first professional job or whatever, doing art, you're gonna realize that, like, art block isn't even really a thing, you know? Like, it's... It's you just you just have to get things done. You don't have the option to be inspired or motivated. You just you got to do it. Um, so that's part of the part of the solution. But um, I like to take a break whenever it's personal work. I like to take a break from the project. Maybe like go play some games, go watch a, a movie, inspiring one that reminds me of why I do this stuff. Uh, that's like my main trip trick is to get in my own brain for a second and like give me a, myself like a jump start remind myself of why do i do this why do i why do i sculpt like what's the point why am aren't i just sitting around and, and eating grapes off the vine or something like why am i doing this at all sometimes you just need to remind yourself like what is your primary motivation and then let that drive your desire to create um so how that works is like oh uh you the game that inspires you the most is like God of War, let's say, and you're feeling art blocked, go play God of War for like five hours and don't feel guilty about it. That's the thing. Schedule out some time for yourself. Go play it for five hours and and remind yourself why you love this, why you do it, you know. Another way that I know people use to do it um, is they f just do like a quick warm-up project or a simple project um, that isn't like, at least this is something I do sometimes too, that isn't high pressure, like it doesn't, it's okay if you mess it up, and that kind of helps a little bit. Less. <laughs> Martin, do you think that working on drawing skills are good for sculpting, figure, and gesture drawing has helped me a lot personally? Um, I talk about this like every stream, so I have like a whole script. Can I go by now? So, drawing and sculpting use a lot of skills um, in common. So they use art fundamentals, they use the skill of observation, they use the skill of... Um, got like so uh, form and balance and volumes and the way light hits things and all these things anatomy like like both I think activities use the same skill set 
with like a little variance, right? So when you're practicing drawing, you're improving in those skills of, of art fundamentals and you know, measuring proportions and stuff like that. So when you, when you draw for like a day and you get better at those things, when you come back to your sculpting, you're going to be better at those things. So overall, your sculpting is going to get better from practicing drawing. And here's the thing, vice versa as well. I find that sculpting has helped me get better at drawing. Because those skills, they're independent of the medium. They, they, it doesn't matter if it's 3D or not, you know. Um, so yes, practicing drawing will help you with sculpting, but it's not really a prerequisite. Like you don't have to be draw a drawing. You don't have to know how to draw in order to be a sculptor. And that's the thing I want to drive home every time I talk about this is that everybody asks me uh, if, if they have to know how to know how to draw to sculpt and I'm like no don't let that stop you it helps but it doesn't you know it doesn't change everything it's not that mandatory so make sure that you know you're working on your fundamentals as you go no matter what um, and that's where like mindful I, I think there's a better name for this but like mindful practice comes in so like Don't just sit there and do the same motions every time, like, oh, I'm just gonna make a dog, whatever, I'm just need a dog. No, like, you gotta practice new new techniques, you gotta practice new ways of seeing, new ways of uh, breaking down shapes, things like that, um, so that you can always be getting better. So do you think getting a degree is important? Jimmy, um, it depends. So. I, I'm of the mindset that getting a degree is a highly personal uh, decision that has to be right for you. Um, getting a degree is useful. Okay, let's start there. Getting a degree means that you went to school for a certain amount of years. It means that you have some a certain amount of experience to back you up in your job search versus having just a personal portfolio and no years of experience like to, to, to write about. No, you can say, oh yeah, I have a four-year degree. It helps you learn accountability, professional skills, punctuality, things like that. And it's a great way to network. You start off um, by just getting to know a bunch of people that are also going into the industry and teachers that hopefully are in the industry and things like that. It's a great networking tool. Uh, it's a great competitive tool. Like like being around other students that are trying to be better than you makes, makes you want to be better. And things like that so you kind of everybody grows together there are so many upsides to going to college and not just that but if you are wanting to get a visa to a different country that where where you're originally from a work visa specifically or if you want to be a teacher like say uh you want to work in the industry for five years and then be a professor right you need a degree so those two things like require degrees basically but if you want to work in your country of origin and you know um the jobs uh, that's another thing you need to research if the jobs in your area are requiring degrees um turns out like in the xr like like xr like ar and vr world people are starting to require um degrees because they're getting so many applicants that it's just another way to weed them out like, like weed people out. So um, they're starting to require degrees. So you have to do your research and figure out if the jobs you want require degrees or not. Some do, some don't. Uh, a lot don't, actually. But, you know, you still have to be smart about it. So I'm using the pinch brush to kind of uh, straighten out this lid. Looks way nicer that way, if I say so myself. The top one looking pretty good. Let's look at the bottom one. Because the bottom one's more complicated because it's kind of like melting off. Like for example, I just got a new job as a professor, okay? And I wouldn't have been able to get it if I didn't have a degree. And, I, and I'm really excited about this new job, so it would have been really sad if I couldn't work there because of my degree.
Put him a little better, move him a little better. Let's take the pinch. But first, let's even add more volume here. By the way, your doggo's looking great. Thank you. I love making some doggos. I'm actually gonna work on this um, during the weekend, I think. I was needing a weekend project, and I think this is a good one to, to go on. Maybe I'll put it on our station. Wouldn't that be fancy? I used to be obsessed with the TV show Face Off. I would always get inspired to Z-verse something new after watching it. I miss that show. Rewatch it. There's a good show if you like that one. Um, Skin Wars. It's about skin painting, but it's kind of inspiring too. <laughs> Greetings from Toronto. Hi. You're welcome, Akash. Are you in Sao Paulo, Brazil? No. Uh, is it better to buy a model or learn to sculpt a model? Is it better to buy a model or learn to sculpt a model? I am new to ZBrush and trying to do my art project for university, especially digitally for the first time in Blender and ZBrush. Uh, it depends on your goals, Fario. Like, if your goal is to be a character artist or like an artist in general, I recommend making your own model for sure, for sure. However, if your goal is to like become an amazing like game programmer or something, and that's what you want to spend your time on, I would just download a model. But uh, that's only because it would give you more time to focus on on. Uh, other skills but if you want to be an artist definitely make your own for sure i wonder why all dogs have this like little mole on their cheek are there any differences when you are making a VR game and a PC game that will be played on the screen. Oh yeah, there are many differences, Jimmy. Um, there are differences in the artwork, there are differences in the uh, testing and all this stuff, like like the gameplay is all different. Um, some, some of the differences are... Um, well, one of the things is that you can no longer control where the player goes that much and what they see. So like in PC games, for example, we're always being able to like save polygons by um, like, if we make a chair, we might delete the bottom of the chair off. Um, so like like the, the bottom side, because we're like, oh, the player will never see that. So you delete that off. But in VR, you don't know what the player's gonna see because they have like full control. They can like stick their head under the chair and look up. And if it's deleted, then then you break immersion. So you have to like leave things like that. You can't use those kinds of cheats anymore. Um, scale is a huge issue with VR. Um, timing is a huge issue with VR in my opinion. Um, what, what else is there? Like, you can cause PTSD in VR, so you gotta be like extra careful with, with your game uh, design. Um, what brush am I even using? Why is it not working? I must have also like the wrong brush and I'll sit there for like hours trying to figure out like, why is this, isn't this doing what I thought it was supposed to? Um, when it comes to VR, you no longer have, like, like when you are making a game for the screen, just the PC game, and you are making a piece of machinery, and you have uh, bolts and nails on it, let's say, you can use a normal map for those bolts and nails, but in VR, since you have stereoscopic vision and the person can get super close, uh, you can't use normal maps to cheat like that anymore. It's, it's so it's kind of productive. So in VR, the frame rate has to be higher. It has to be more optimized, and you can't cheat using normal maps. So it's like a whole different set of challenges. It's actually really fun. 
I tried to scope a cyan space pod. Any advice on how to make a panel curve line, like a tennis ball pattern? Um, I'm sorry, I, I, I would need like way more info and like pictures to go off of. If you want, you can post it on my Discord server and people will help you out. People who know better, uh, uh, what do you call it, hard surface in ZBrush? Cause that's not me. I've been meaning to, guys, like, I promise. I've been meaning to learn Z Modeler for, like, the past year, but I, I haven't been able to get to it yet. Mm. Well, that's cool. Congratulations on your new job. Thank you, Jimmy. Well, that's cool. Congratulations. Oh, I already read that. Nimhug, to understand proportion in human anatomy. Okay, let's, I've been asked this question a bunch of times today, so I'm just gonna embrace it and we're going to talk about it, okay? Like, we're actually gonna talk about it, so let's do it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop sculpting for a second and talk about how to understand proportion in art. Not just in the human body, but I'm going to look up the human body. And I can't be naked because otherwise I'll get this channel removed. I'm opening up Photoshop here, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk. I'm trying to find the right picture here. I found it. It's watermarked, but honestly, I don't care. I'm opening Photoshop up. It's taking its sweet time. Hey, Shotgun Scream. How are you? How have you been enjoying your streams? Guys, Google your question before asking her. <laughs> I mean, it's okay, but like, I don't know the answer to everything in the world, you know? Guys, I don't know what's going on with my PC right now. It, it doesn't- oh, it's because Unreal's open. Shoot, let me close it. Guys, I'm sorry, I wasn't planning for this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close Unreal. Hello from Algeria, hi! Is there scope in freelance for 3D artists overall? I don't understand that question. Is it possible to get a job in the industry without topology skills? Um, it depends on exactly what you mean by a job in the industry. Like, not every job in the industry requires topology skills. I have a feeling I know that you're asking about character art job. In which case, um, I'm not gonna lie and say it's impossible. Because nothing is impossible. But, but why would you do that? Like, why would you, why would you lower your odds that much? You know, like, it's a requirement in game art for you to know topology. I've been in a lot of places. So why not take the time and learn that and, and make sure that you are up to par with the other candidates? He's going to make a new uh, thing in Photoshop real fast. You ever use these spheres? Yeah, all the time. Whenever I started, whenever I started ZBrush, that's the main thing I used um, for for making my models, actually. All right. You guys ready to rock and roll? So this is one way, one not way of many ways of how you can understand proportion in art, okay? So when it comes to the human body, one very, very common technique, let me make like a red, 
A very common technique for understanding proportion is to simply measure. Um, let me make this bigger. It's, it's too big. Too big. Um, is to understand is to measure. Like it's it's really it sounds like it's not artistic or anything, but like trust me, it will get you off a lot of the way. <laughs> um, so how do you measure a photograph without knowing exactly how tall this woman is and stuff? So you're gonna take you're gonna create your own units of measurements from something you can see. So the most common is the head. I'm just gonna kind of create a grid here. So this is one head length. Okay, it's kind of big. I'm gonna. This is one head length. I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm just trying to decide how I'm best illustrate this. So now our new unit of measurement is one head. Okay, imagine the head is like a foot or a centimeter. So now I'm just going to kind of bring this down and measure out how many heads she has. Ugh. I should probably lock this layer. Which I totally remember how to do. And thankfully for us, Photoshop does all this like nice snapping stuff, so it automatically snaps. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Okay. So that is the most basic version of measurements that we're going to do. So now we can see, so there's a little bit of perspective in this. So we don't know exactly where her feet end. Let's just say that right there is the perfect height. It's right at her ankle. So she's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven heads tall. So that's how you start. Okay, this person's seven heads tall. You make a head and then you can kind of like try to measure out the rest of the body. So you re refer to this. Say you're putting down her, her breasts, okay? If your breasts are not meeting this height, so that your breasts are down here, um, like almost three head or two, like an entire head apart from her chin, then you know it's wrong. So you have to move them up. If you put your belly button like here or here and you, and you look at the sizes and you're like, oh, my belly button is supposed to be near the, the fourth line, but it's actually near the third line. That's wrong. So you kind of just go from there and you start like um, fixing up your proportions. So from there, you can like start making like a half head measurements and then you can be like, okay, how thin is her arm? And then you compare this length to, to her head and you're like, okay, so I, it's like a third of a head. I can make that. So you make the size bigger. Um, whenever you see in movies or like in real life, when you see a painter going like this, it's like, I'm doing it bad, but it's like they are taking measurements of the, the reference. And then they are applying it to their model. I do it all the time. Like, so, so you kind of like, they're like taking, okay, the head is this big. So they mark it on their pen or their is or paintbrush or whatever, and then they'll do it. So this is like an easy way to try to not get things wrong. There are so many other ways to do this. I also like to do um, a simple breakdown of shapes uh, when, when I am, um, I'm doing this. Here's another way I'm going to illustrate this, is I'm going to take the uh, circle ellipse brush. And I'm just kind of... Make her head. And let's go ahead and make it a green stroke with no fill. So like now you can use this measurements and you go like, okay, how thin is her waist or how thick is her waist? Her waist is just under, her waist is just under, um, just under one head or like there's about a little under a head. So from there on, you can be like, yo, okay, now I understand my, the one waist I made was too small. I can fix it. 
<sighs> now this looks like you're making a female body with a great big head. Human anatomy and Photoshop on official ZBrush live stream. Hey, it's all the same, like, in a way. Like, I'm here to answer questions and make you guys better ZBrush artists. And if I have to open up Photoshop, I'm gonna open it. And I'm not gonna apologize. Andrea Cardoso, obrigada. Uh, I love streaming in ZBrush live. The community is amazing. Thanks for all your help getting me there. You're welcome. You deserve it. I haven't stopped by your stream yet. It's on Sunday. I'm streaming Sundays, too. But I think yours is behind mine. I'll figure it out. I'll be there. Maybe next time. Uh, so Navarro says, take a figure drawing class or practice sketching anatomy. It translates to ZBrush. It does. Uh, I want to start streaming art stuff, but I don't know where to start. Uh, do you have any advice on how to get started? Uh, yeah. Um, re do your research on like how to be a good streamer and then just do it. Trust me, like you just got to start. I've seen artists who work only in ZBrush and do any retopo. Um, that is existing. But you probably don't know, like, maybe they post only ZBrush on their Instagram, but when it comes to their real jobs, they are actually retopping because, you know, that's sometimes the thing that's necessary. Or, like, if they're a big shot or something, they'll have, like, an intern retop. But again, like, if, if retopping is one of the requirements, why would you why would you set yourself up for that failure or for that conversation like they love your work but you don't reach up like now you're risking your ability to work at that company even if it works out like the more the more skills applicable skills you have the better hey ashley again a great day it looks concerned by your photoshop example <laughs> That's interesting. Most people I know found retopologizing to be but I like retopologizing. It's fun. Is simply being a retopologizer a job in the industry? I'm relatively good at making characters, but I find major satisfaction in retopologizing a very high poly model. I'm sure that exists. The industry is like a relatively big place. I know that um, I've heard stories of people like that get jobs as junior character artists and Part of what they have to do is just retop, um, retop models that somebody else made, but usually they don't like it. <laughs> I mean, like you'll like it because you like retopping, but they don't. They want to be making characters, and they're forced to retop. You know. Martin, you are a really good teacher. Thank you for your tips. Oh, I appreciate that. I'm gonna screenshot it. For those of you who don't know, um, I do this new thing now where I screenshot nice things that people say to me <laughs> for reasons. Oh my god, I did it again, guys. How much longer do I have on the stream? Am I gonna restart ZBrush again? Still have 40 minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and save this. I'm saving it as new increments every time because I like to be able to go back in time and see how far I've come. I think I think it's a very motivational thing. Hey, what are you doing today? Today I'm making a dog. My Great Dane. Alright, no biggie. No biggie, guys. I need to fix that bug. Um, in case you guys were wondering, if this has already happened a few times, my tablet is really old and it's bugging out ZBrush. I don't think it's ZBrush's fault, I think it's my tablet's fault. Uh, I need to maybe like get a new one or just borrow some somebody's tablet and see if it still happens. Or it could be my computer, but I think it's my tablet because it's every time like I do a certain movement on my tablet, it's, it starts um, freezing up. 
You should do an anatomy stream on your channel and then send people the link instead of doing it on another stream. I know. Um, I don't mind Photoshop. You explained well. Hola. Oi, Majestic. What I meant was the studios or companies hire freelancers to do character or for architectural visualization and PR. Yeah. Yeah. People hire character artists and arch archivist people all the time and PR people all the time. Like, it's a common thing. But we're not looking super strong in this area from the side view, I must say. Like, it's looking pretty good from three quarters, but from side, we're looking a little sad. So let's take a look at it, see what's going on. Oh, it's too high poly, actually. Gotta be careful with that. Okay, um, whenever I restart, I have to reset some of my brush preference. Have you thought about making tutorials or courses? I would watch them since you are very knowledgeable. Uh, I have thought about that. Um, so far, I haven't had time. Um, but I think I will start like at the end of the year, maybe next year. I 100% plan on starting a YouTube channel where I can make free tutorials, free uh, answering questions stuff, uh, stuff like that. I think it would be very cool. What do you guys think? It's just that like I have to get that time and it's not even like time like I have a little bit of time here and there It's just that like if you're gonna do something like that you need to prepare for it to be consistent right if I'm not gonna be able to be consistent with it then it's not even gonna be good so I have to like have that like permanent slot of time in my week in order to be able to do that Where can I see your work? Oh, thank you, Jimmy the guy. Jimmy the guy just posted all my links right there in case you want to see my work, talk to me, uh, or watch my stream, which happens every Sunday at 5 p.m. Central Time. I have my own personal stream where I do ZBrush and we have a really good time. Where do you change the focal length? I find the default perspective field of view too strong. Okay, so I'm going to turn your perspective on right here. You go to draw. Uh, and then focal length is right here, and field of view is right here. Every once in a while I like to do this. It actually looks kind of cute, it looks like those, um, you know, there's just a bunch of cute dog pictures that look like this. So yeah, draw. And then you can just change this as necessary. A good one is like 30, I like 30. Using ZBrush 2021? Yes. Hi, Joe. Uh, Sikar Taylor. Hi, what exactly does the sculptor do in, in game or movie studio? They are required to do topology, so since Spanner. I plan on joining the 3D modeling course, but I don't know if my course will cover substance. Um, that varies from studio to studio. A good rule of thumb is that the smaller the studio, the more different skill sets you need. Uh, because you need to fill um, fill more roles so sometimes people will go to big studios and like literally all you do is sculpt like one thing so there are studios out there that are so big that all you do is sculpt expressions like face expressions or you sculpt women and somebody else sculpts men like for real there are studios that are that big and that have that much budget but if you go to work for a smaller studio, which is often the case with people who are just beginning, 
um, then it's better to know how to, how to sculpt, how to do retop, how to do uh, substance designer or painter really, uh, and all that stuff. The good rule of thumb is to do your research and figure out what your dream jobs require. So if you want to work at Blizzard, go look up the Blizzard job openings. Um, if you find that they require something, then just, and you really want to work there, then just invest in learning that stuff. Uh, and then go from there. Maybe your dream job will change, but you'll still have learned new skills, which is important. Heck yeah, because you're a great teacher. You guys are so nice. You guys know I'm starting a teaching job uh, in a week. And I'm excited. And, you know, all your words of affirmation only make me feel more secure. So thank you. Uh, remind me of those Busta Rhymes Fish Islands music videos, but the whenever I had it like super. <sighs> give him a hat. Give him something that involves dynamics. Everyone wants to see dynamics. Is that true? Does everybody want to see dynamics? I have forty minutes left, so if you guys really want to see dynamics, I will show you dynamics. I will show you dynamics if you want me to, but I, I need more confirmation that that's what you guys want. Well, guys, I really need to fix this. I'm so sorry. It's like embarrassing. Yeah. Your sense of form is really fantastic. You make really smart decisions while modeling. Thank you, Navarro. Navarro. I appreciate that. A perfect perspective view for Maya when we export. Every time I model, a little change when I export. Absolutely. So that's what I was saying earlier. You might you might not have been here. You you gotta know your final destinations, field of view, and perspective, and all of that, and then apply it here in ZBrush. Where'd you get the music from? It's called Pretzel Rocks, and it's free online. Uh, Akash, is it okay to work on multiple projects at the same time? Um, no, you'll go to jail, art jail, just kidding. Uh, when it comes to art, I want you guys to understand something from my point of view, is that there's no rules. Like, really, truly, there are no rules. People are gonna try to tell you that there are rules. And there are things like art fundamentals, which don't change, and things like that, that you should probably respect. And you gotta know the rules to break the rules, but anyway. You only gotta know what works best for you. Like, some people work on three projects at a time. Some people work on one project at a time. Like, it's up to you, you know? How did you start your journey in 3D? It's 11 p.m. India, but you give a lot of information that I don't want to sleep. Um, how? Okay, what was the question again? How did you start your journey in 3D? I started my journey in 3D basically on accident. So I wanted to be a 2D concept artist. Um, I wanted to be a 2D concept artist. And I went to college for uh, game art and design because I wanted to be a concept artist for games. But then uh, halfway through, they, they introduced me to ZBrush and I fell in love. And literally that's like... I liked ZBrush so much that I switched career paths so that I could use more ZBrush. Like, um, and from there, 
um, I just kind of became really like I started watching tutorials, started talking to people, participating in forums, things like that, and just learning and teaching myself. I don't know what that even is. What's dynamics? Oh, you're missing out. It's um, basically ZBrush 2021 has this new feature where they have uh, soft body dynamics. Basically, it's this tab right here called dynamics. Let me bring it up here. You can see it. Uh, and you can um, simulate things. I'll show you. Um, what should I use? I'm gonna use a, a plane first, show you things, okay? Let me first turn the doggo down just a little bit. Actually, that should be fine. No, I'm streaming, so I should probably I'm go ahead and close Photoshop too. We don't need any extra computation to go anywhere. So I'm gonna go here to append plane. Oh no, that's not a plane. Singled it. Append a plane. I'm gonna rotate this. Bring it up here, turn it into like a dog face blank. Next, I'm going to, so you see how the plane is like literally just one sided. I'm going to go here into this new feature um, in dynamic subdivision. Uh, in dynamic subdivision, I'm actually going to turn this down where you can actually add thickness to things. And that helps the simulation actually. So see, it's getting thicker. I'm gonna leave it like that, maybe a little less thick. So now this is gonna be our face blanket. <laughs> so from now, I'm going to show you guys just the simple, super simple um, simulation in which it just falls, okay? Or it, it falls towards the direction, it doesn't have to be down, because you can actually choose. I don't know how in-depth you guys want me to go with this, so I'll go a little depth, okay? So here's the dynamics menu. Simulation iterations is basically how many calculations it's going to do for your simulation. The more the more accurate your simulation is going to be, but also the more taxing it's going to be on your computer. So if you turn it up to like a bazillion, you're probably going to freeze ZBrush or you're going to just like see it like slowly. If you turn it down to one, it's going to go super fast, but it's also going to stretch and look awful. So you got to find the right number for you. Strength is the strength of the simulation. So basically, like if I set it to zero, it's basically not going to move at all. Firmness is the firmness of the cloth itself. Um, so if there's like differences between cloths, like a silk is super soft, not firm at all. So it's gonna simulate like super soft. And um, the material of a suit, like a blazer is harder. So it's gonna simulate a little bit more harder. Basically that's all that is. Um, I'm gonna just go to another one that I like. So I'm gonna turn on collision volume, which is gonna take a second to calculate. And basically, that is going to calculate uh, every other tool in the scene so that it can collide against that. And I'm going to turn inflate down because um, whenever you're calculating this collision volume, it creates a cage around the other tools in the scene. And if you leave inflate one, it's going to create a, a cage that's um, inflated away from all the other models. If you, um, and that way, it's going to kind of I should probably just show it to you guys, it's easier to understand. That way it's not, it's gonna kind of float there. So okay, let's go ahead and say, run simulation. Looking pretty good. Face blanket, anybody? Why does the dog have to blanket? Nobody knows, it. it's art and art has no rules. Looking pretty good, face blanket. Oh no, we have pierced it. It actually looks kind of cute. So here's what happens if I make the firmness uh, 
one. See, it's like it's like a softer cloth. Oh yeah, and, and it hits the floor too. If you don't want it to hit the floor, you can click. There's a button here somewhere that talks about the floor. I'm not finding it. Is this only in Zebrush 2021? Yes, yes. What's my zodiac sign? I'm theoretically an Aries, even though I have no Aries traits, I think. Uh, Dynamics is not only for cloth, though. Absolutely, it's like anything soft bodies in Zebrush. Thank you for answering my question, no problem. It's also for destroying things. Oh, I only have Zebrush Core. Yeah, I don't think they have that in Zebrush Core. I have a doubt. Zebrush uses Maya's. No, Maya and Zebrush are completely different softwares. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it back to three, and I'm gonna run simulation a little bit. By the way, the simulation runs forever if you let it, so you have to kind of like stop it. Okay, so there are other cool things you can do with simulations, though. So you can actually use, for example, there's this brush called Transpose Cloth which is the same as transpose, except it simulates cloth. Do you see that? Like, it's, it's actually simulating cloth. And it gives you so much cool control. Uh, another one is if you go to like your brush menus and you click C, you're gonna find all your cloth options here. So we have cloth move, which is the same as move, but you guessed it, it simulates cloth. Like that. Um, there are some cool ones, like um, cloth. Which one's that? Like twister, I think? What? Twisting some cloth here, no big deal. Don't mind me, just twisting my dog's face cloth. <laughs> now he's holding it in his mouth, kind of. At least that's what I'm trying to accomplish right now. Look it up with that zebrish discount code. Floor collision button. Oh yeah! Oh my god, I am blind, can you tell? <laughs> I I literally looked at the menu for like a, way too long looking for that floor collision button and I couldn't find it. I'm embarrassed just getting that. What is the software? This is ZBrush 2021. Fun. Wow, that's sick. I know, right? Why only in 2021? Because they just added it. I have not heard of a sale for ZBrush licenses, but if you guys want, I can let you know next stream. I can ask. Wrap his neck with the cloth. Uh, fluff, Fluffle Pimp. Hey, hey, I'm also a VR developer that is currently learning ZBrush. Nice. How do you like it so far? What kind of VR dev do you do? Oh, he's got like a bib. Uh, let's see what else we can do, actually. Let's turn it up, why don't we? Turn it oh, guys, uh, before I do that, I want to show you guys a new feature from ZBrush 2021. You ready? You're not ready for this. Under Dynamic Subdivision, right here, we have this thing called Micropoly now. So you can turn Micropoly on, and then you can, like, um, choose... Okay, I have to explain Micropoly from the beginning. So basically all it does is it takes each polygon of your mesh and it replaces it with a different mesh. So these are all the options for the replacement little mesh that just gets repeated for every polygon that you have. That's literally it. So you can make your own and like it, it makes cloth look awesome. <laughs> wow, this is magic. I know, right? This is your 2021. Um, how do I say this in 2020, 2020 terms? Pixelogic team really popped off with this one. 
And, and not just that, but it's still, the simulation still works with it on. So I'm going to say cloth slide. So if you're making a sculpt or like a 3D print and you're doing a cape or a skirt or something, like this is the way to go. Oh, and the cool thing about micro poly, by the way, is that you can change it at any time. Literally, like you're not stuck with just one. Seriously, like you can change it. Isn't that awesome? Is poly paint good enough, or do we have to use substance for texturing? Depends on your project. So, dear, if it's like a sculpt, poly painting is enough. If it's a game model, sometimes poly painting enough, but but I never consider it to be. I always use both. Interesting. So, 2020 isn't a complete bust. Yes, at least there's good news in the year 2020. Of them, a ZBrush. So the fabric you use with MicroMesh is 3D printable. Doesn't it have lots of tiny holes? Um, yeah, it has a lot of tiny holes. But if you use a MicroMesh that doesn't have a lot of tiny holes like that, uh, and you actually weld it together, then you should be fine. All right, like you'd have to try it, right? But I'm sure there's a way. There, like, there's no way that there isn't a way. You know, there's. It's just, it's just fun. And it makes, okay, the thing about micro mesh is that it makes your work look super detailed, super fast. So people are like, oh, you put so much work into that. And you're like, I know. And totally don't say that it was just the one single button click. Micro poly is polygon mesh. Basically, it's it's a my um, a small mesh for each polygon. Uh, all Sims I do use marvelous. Switching between programs is a pain. Time to save. This is a cool thing. Like you can like touch up your fabrics in here. You know, you can do stuff. Let's see what else there is in here. Cloth and plate. By the way, like, I, I only barely scratched the surface of this. Like, there's so much more you can do. Um, for example, you can hit um, expand on on this and, like, how do, how do I put this? And you'll, like, expand your mesh and things like that. Like, there's just a lot of cool things you can do. I recommend uh, taking the time and going through, like, mm, I don't know who has good tutorials on this right now. I think Z Classroom probably definitely has it. Hmm. Can that be used for texture making or does it only work with cloth? No, it works with everything. Like, let me show you. Um, I'm gonna duplicate this out just in case. You can align uh, them. You can rotate them, by the way. Like, you can change the size of the micro poly stuff. It's not the finest work I've ever done. Uh, would you be able... Would you be... May maybe be able to give me notes on my practice model I'm working on. If not, no worries at all. So I'll try to get to it, but if not, uh, make sure to post it in my Discord channel and I'll get to it or somebody from my community will. Um, let me go ahead and post the link again. So here are the links to all my social media and my Discord channel are in chat right now in case you just want to go ahead and click it. Uh, you can find my Twitch where I stream every Sunday at 5 p.m. Central ZBrush every single Sunday. Uh, and I speak in English and Portuguese on those like, like same time. It's crazy. Um, and you can see my Twitter, my Instagram, and my art station where you can see my art. Keep up to date with um, 
when my next streams are going to be and you can also ask me questions and things like that i'll get back to you and my discord which is an awesome community of like like-minded artists and a lot of pros um and a lot of like artists of every uh walk of the life i guess uh we all hang out we share tutorials we share resources we share what inspires and we, we show off our work we get feedback give and get critiques play games and stuff so that's on the discord uh if you guys have want me to take a look at your work i will try to get to it all but if i can't um uh, if you post it in my discord you'll get feedback from like other pros it's a great place to network i'm not trying to sell it too much am i but like it's a great place to network so micropoly works on a per polygon basis yes can you do a poly painting stream soon? I'm really bad at it and I would like to practice along. Okay, Con, no problem. I often do poly paint on these streams. I just um, didn't today. Um, your name looks Portuguese. Do you have Portuguese roots? Yes, I'm Brazilian and Almost by default have Portuguese roots. You are going? I'm going in 20 minutes, so I still have time. Hello, I'm Chandan. When you work in a model, you work on base model or start from sphere? Uh, Chandan, it depends. Um, let me explain to you what I mean. So, if I'm working on a model, say, and I have a deadline and it's say um, my my work or my client wants me to do a beautiful blonde woman then I won't start from a sphere because that would be a huge waste of time I'll start from a base mesh that's already retopped that already has like pores and stuff like that and I just make her make the, the base mesh into what I need uh, and then add customized touches to it Okay, because I don't want to reinvent the wheel every time. But if I'm studying anatomy or if I'm doing something for myself or like I, I don't have a base mesh, then I'll start from a sphere. Like this one, we started from a sphere. In fact, let me do this thing that I like to do in which I pull up, in which I pull up a older version. Maybe we have an older version. <laughs> this is how we started today. Or not really, we started from a sphere and this is how we We've come a long way, I think. <laughs> Even though it's like not, not perfect or not super far, you know, there's only so much you can do when you're talking. Um, if you poly paint, do you have to unwrap to export it? <sighs> Jimmy the guy, um, I think I think for most cases, yes, you have to unwrap. To export your poly paint but you know unwrapping is like a one button two two button process in zbrush <laughs> however i think maybe okay don't quote me on this but i but i think maybe if you're exporting into key shots you don't need to export to unwrap but i could be wrong i just don't use it a lot i think i've just heard about it so there's a chance that if you're doing it into key shot you you don't have to unwrap Micropoly is unwrapped if I export to Maya. I think if the original mesh is unwrapped, then maybe Micropoly is unwrapped too. That looks awesome. I love the proportions. Thank you. Um, where was I? Let's bring up my reference again. I sidetracked a lot to stream, but it's been good. It's been okay. I'm here for you guys, so like, I don't mind getting sidetracked. Going down a few subdivisions to add a little bit of detailing to the forehead here. I'm taking the clay build up and adding a little volume here. You know who is going to be really useful for this? Any standard for the win.
Can you pose the ear of it according to the left reverence? I can, I can do that, yeah. I mean, I'm not even looking at it, but I'm not attached to the way the ears are posed now, so... What would you say is your sculpting style? I know my sculpting style um, is very soft and elegant. That's what people told me on stream. But yeah, I think if I, nobody had told me, I wouldn't know, actually. I'm very soft-handed, light-handed. Uh, what is your sculpting style? And did you learn your sculpting style from somebody or did you just come up with your own sculpting style? Because I know like you can you can totally like there's nothing wrong with it. You your sculpting style can be influenced by tutorials, teachers, whatever. And it's actually probably a good thing. They know what they're doing a lot of the time. A little much, <laughs> if you ask me. Looking a little much there, Mr. Dog. That smooth is so strong. Stream, can you send me a Discord link so that we can chat a bit? Oh, that's not for me, right? You can just do table displays on that. I might be reading. My sculpting style is bad? No. Majestic, chaotic until it works. Oh my god, my sculpting style can be very chaotic too. If you guys haven't noticed, right? Some people say chaotic. I say I'm flexible. You guys probably noticed by the, how many times I've stopped what I'm supposed to be doing to like talk to you guys about something else or like show you something on Zebra or in Photoshop or... Adding a little bit of that like more squarish shape there. I'm just gonna take the clay build up and soften that a little bit. Maybe an inflate would be good here. I have a bumpiness. Got a little bumpiness going on. Not my favorite thing. Your style is because tablet bugs. <laughs> Um, really imp for a teacher? I have no idea what that means. How much time do you do you have to get? How much time do you have to get improving anatomy when you're a beginner? Understand? Still, I am learning. Okay, so I think what you like think your question is: How much time does it take to improve your anatomy when you're a beginner? Um. And the answer is doo -doo -doo -doo, three months and four days. Just kidding. It's not three months and four days. How much you improve anatomy is changes between people. I'm pretty sure you guys are sick of hearing me say that a lot of things are individual, but they really are. I can't give you how long it's going to take you. It depends on so much stuff. It depends on your... Um, your current skill sets. It depends on how you see the world. It depends on if you, if you've ever studied anatomy before, or not. It depends on um, what resources you have access to. It depends on uh, how how you're studying. Are you being mindful about your studying? Are you not? Are you doing one hour a day, five hours a day? Are you doing seven hours a day but you're distracted by YouTube or something? 
Like, it so much depends. So much depends. So I can't tell you. But I just know that it's it's never ends. Like, that's the thing about anatomy, is that even the best zebra sculptors that you know, that you've heard of, that you follow on Instagram or whatever, are still learning anatomy. It never ends. That's the beauty of it. Navarro. Um, I always end up over-exaggerating features because I try it out just to see what the model will look like and then I always prefer it. When is your next Pixelogic stream? My next Pixelogic stream is on the 12th of September. Same day, same time. I mean, same time. It's on Saturday at the same time as today, which is 8 a.m. California time. Imp's importance. Oh. Whenever I see Imp, I just think of like Game of Thrones, like the Imp. Very good work. Thank you, Roberto. I wonder how does a Great Dane sculpt remind everybody of human anatomy? Because um, honestly, it's all the same in a way. Like, anatomy, it's anatomy, you know? Like, it takes the same skill set to make a human as it does a dog. Um, and I personally always think about the similarities between species. Like, mammals have so much in common. And not just that, but like you can trace back similarities all across like all vertebrae. Um, and so like, yeah, it's it's. I don't know how to explain it. It's just we have so many similarities anyway. Like, don't you see how cute that dog is? Qual foi o modelo mais demorado que você já fez quando o tempo demorou para concluir? Eu, eu fiz um modelo que demorou oito meses, mas não foi porque ele era complicado, foi porque eu era boba mesmo. Eu fiz ele sem simetria, sendo que eu poderia ter usado simetria, porque era tipo T-Pose, só que eu fiz sem simetria. E nem uma idiota. Uau, Ana, ainda ralando quantas horas aí, notícia? Não, por enquanto tá de férias, né? Eu, eu me pedi a missão do meu último emprego e meu novo emprego só começa na semana que vem, então eu tô de uma boa. Vai almoçar, querida. Uh, faltam só 7 minutos para eu sair. Well, Ana, I don't know. Uh, pen tab or pen monitor, which is the best for work? That is a personal decision. You have to try both and decide. I like pen tablets. But a lot of artists I know like pen monitors. Pen monitors also look cooler. Wrong tool, wrong tool, abort. What games do I play? Uh, right now, I only play... Payday 2, which is super unusual for me because usually I only play games that have monsters, creatures, or dinosaurs, or like some sort of fashion aspect to them. Um, so like, I love my favorite game is The Witcher 3, and my second favorite games are Skyrim, Ark, and the list goes on, but, but right now I'm playing Payday 2 because it's so fun to like get with your friends that you haven't seen in a while from the quarantine and just like yell about stealing money. It's kind of fun. Um, I played Ooblets a little bit recently. Um, I'm considering playing Cyberpunk when it comes out. 
because The Witcher, again, is my favorite game, but I like things with monsters, creatures, and animals, and cyberpunk is not that. And I don't love playing games with guns, although Payday is the first one I've enjoyed. So maybe it's the gateway game, you know, like maybe that's all I needed. 12 is my birthday, yay, yay, yay. Now I know what I'm doing on my birthday. Oh, Jimmy, that's so sweet. Remind, on the 12th, remind me that it's your birthday and we will uh, do a special birthday celebration. Or at least I'll say happy birthday and then everybody else will say happy birthday. And then we'll, you'll have a happy It's all structure, how muscles move beneath the skin, how form has weight, and fat too. I always find that people forget fat when they're talking about anatomy and I'm like, bro, fat is so important, you have no idea. Every single model I see, or a lot of model, anatomy models I see are just like ripped, tense muscle and I'm like, where's the fat? It looks super unnatural, people don't, don't look like that at all times. Like if you try to animate a, a character that's been um, created to look tense all the time, it just looks so wrong. Anyway, I'm, that's a digression. <sighs> Eight months? How? Why? It's because I was dumb. Screen tablets are bloody expensive. <laughs> uh, was it when you were learning it? Yeah, it was the first- it was one of the first models I ever made, the one that took eight months. So for context, guys, somebody asked me in Portuguese, I think, what was the model that took me the longest? And I said that one model took me eight months. I can actually pull it up for you guys. And I'm gonna explain why. It's not because it was hard. It's not because it was complicated. It's because it was dumb. And I'll explain it. This model, right here, took me eight months to make. Because, first of all, it was like the third model I had ever made. So, don't judge me. Yet. But I had just started learning ZBrush. And right at the beginning of the process, I accidentally broke symmetry. Okay, I was still in college. Nobody helped me. I had a teacher. I had many teachers that all looked at it and like nobody helped me fix this. I broke symmetry and then I couldn't figure out how to regain it and I didn't want to go back. So I just made this entire thing asymmetrically, like, like I sculpted both sides separately. This entire thing. Because it was dumb, because there's a button in ZBrush that says Smart Resim, which is supposed to fix the problem, but I didn't know at the time, that's the thing. I, I'm very, like, I, I always remem remember my own beginner experiences when I'm dealing with beginners. It's like, knowledge compounds, you know, like, the more you know, the easier it is to learn more. I didn't know anything at this time. Like... I pulled this whole thing off with like three brushes and in a laptop, like I swear, and it was really hard for me because you just didn't, I just didn't know what I was doing. So I did this entire, like imagine I sculpted each toe on both feet individually um, and stuff like that. So yeah, that this took a long time, way longer than it should. I also did the retop, I did the retop asymmetrically each toe at a time and and honestly like i'm not a, i'm not ashamed to tell you guys the story like some people would be ashamed because it sucks so much but i'm not because i was a beginner and i understand the struggle of being a beginner and i'll never forget that struggle a lot of professionals like they they they, they tend to forget that they were uns once imperfect and perfect beginners who didn't know what they were doing and like they're like super mean and to beginners and stuff like that but I'm not that person. By the way, since we're here, let me show you my uh, latest piece that I put on here. Um, it, this was made for my ZBrush 2021 beta so I participated in the beta testing, it was really fun. And so I made the dress with the new cloth brushes, I made this like loincloth with new cloth brushes I use the cloth brushes on the snakes a little bit, but you can hardly tell. Um, fiber mesh for the grass. VDM uh, cracks. I made VDM cracks and it was really fun for the um, for the statues here. I used micro mesh or micro poly for the ground here. Like by the way, like this is micro poly. Insane, right? Amazing. 
um, I used micro poly for the snake scales too, and then I baked it down in arm set. So like it's it's game ready, it's normal map. Um, but I used it to bake on bake a normal map. It was fun. Guys, I think it's my time to say goodbye. It's time to say goodbye. Because it is 2 p.m. here, and I have to go get lunch. Even though this coffee really filled me up, the result is great. Thank you. I'm going to keep working on this this weekend and hopefully post it on Instagram, the final one, on Monday. Hopefully, because like, I don't know what's going on. I'm still kind of moving into my new place and all that. And I have to work on my classes because I'm going to be a teacher. I love that so much. This thing's incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, everybody got the Disney app. Uh, most impressive to recognize and share your faults. I wasn't doing it to be impressive, but thank you. Yeah, exactly three hours. Nice. <laughs> I keep my one eye on the clock. That's good. Um, for detailing which map is best, normal displacement, it depends on uh, your final renderer. So, uh, I think, yeah, like I use normal maps for game stuff. Thank you, you made my day. Oh, thank you. I, that I'm so happy that I made your day. Thank you for the informative stream. You're welcome. Ciao. Guys, make sure to follow. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. Make sure to follow me. Uh, on Twitter, Instagram, and or our station. Okay, the links are right there in chat. I have my own Twitch channel called Anna Carolina Arts. The name is also there. Uh, where I stream ZBrush at 5 p.m. Central Time every single Sunday. And I do ZBrush, we, we have fun, we like to chat, we... Uh, more tips and tricks. I, I, I tend to have a less linear experience on there, so like I can stop to help you guys anytime. You can send me your work, sometimes I'll take a look at it depending on the day. And if you want to reach out to me and ask me a question, show me your work, do it through uh, one of these links or Discord. Discord is the best one, okay? I'm posting it right now. And then my Discord is a platform, uh, like a forum kind of, with like 800 uh, ZBrush artists and like character artists. A lot of them are like super pro level, so you want to be in there. And it's a place where we share tutorials, tips and tricks, uh, we hang out, we talk, we play games, we um, do critiques and stuff, so make sure to join that. And last but not least, if you enjoyed this stream, make sure to follow this channel. This is the Pixelogic channel. Pixelogic are the people who make ZBrush. And this channel uh, hosts, or like, receive, how is it, hosts, I guess? so many amazing talented artists like like every single day there's at least one different artist doing a stream on this channel and now they have this new uh series called zbrush master ZBrush masters let me see here let's see let's see i'm sorry i forgot it's loading 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 Oh, that's me. Hi. Wow, I look derpy. Um, okay, there are podcasts and stuff like that, but I am looking for ZBrush Masters. Basically, there's this new like this new thing on here where uh, people like Rafael Grazetti, Ma Maria Pamfilova, and others come on here and they do ZBrush and they talk. So you really want to be following this channel. Make sure you do. Okay, wherever you might be watching from, guys. Thank you so much for everything you guys do. Um, and I appreciate you all for coming. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. 